Hey guys, so today actually working on a new set of Mandalorian armour which is going to be a cool sort of custom thing that's got ta pieces taken from like Death Trooper armour and it's actually not going to be for me, it's uh, it's going to be for, wait, where is he, this guy, this guy here. Hi. <laughs> so this is Matt, he's one of the Imperial Outlanders, if you want to go follow what he does, uh, go look at DT Outlander on Instagram, I'll put a link down in the description, so together we're going to be working on a new set of Mandalorian armour. I've always wanted to do a Mando, you know, seeing one of our members up close and personal at um, an event we did in Portsmouth and it was just so cool to see and who doesn't like Bounce Hunters to see now? Exactly. Not. Now Matt is also very kindly supporting me on Patreon and now we've got to do the whole thing. This isn't a Patreon perk by the way, you don't get to come here and build something. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you do want to support this channel and the stuff I do, please, there's a link at the end of the video and there'll be a link down in the description because as I said, YouTube is making it really harder for small creators at the moment. Uh, the views are going down, so this is going to be what's going to keep the channel going in the future. So please do support on Patreon, and without further ado, let's get on with this stuff! So Matt's already gone and done some work and printed off a bunch of templates and done them in cardboard, so we just made sure that they fit him before we transferred it over to Foamex, which is what's being used today rather than just standard EVO foam, which I've used for my holiday special Boba Fett. So most of yesterday was spent cutting that stuff out because it is thick and that is hard to get through with a blade. It can be done but you've just got to spend some time over it. Yeah, we kind of, a couple of attempts, we thought, yeah, we can do it once. No, not happening. No. So in fact, one, uh, one of our members uh, recommended it, so we're going with what's been recommended. So. Yeah, and so today is going to be the bit where we're going to be heat forming and actually if the weather holds, might get a little bit of painting started, might at least get a primer layer on there. So this is all the armour pieces that have been heat formed. You know, it's so much easier to do it when you've actually got someone here to mould it on. So we've got the back, there's the cod piece, back piece, we've got all the chest pieces, shoulder, legs and knees. So uh, I think we're missing a couple of bits, but we'll... Uh, yeah, just, just hand plates and I'm thinking maybe a little something for the, the shoulder uh, with the capes on the set. So, uh, but hey, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. So we're just going to put a layer of primer on everything now and wait for that to dry before we can actually get on to doing the fun bit which is actually painting it up. So what we're doing now is uh, we've got some 5mm EVA foam, trusty foam, god I love this stuff. And I'm actually going to put a, a dragon pattern on the top, so just working out the very base shape because obviously we want it to fit really nicely onto the shape that we've just cut out for the actual main armour pieces so it's gonna fit perfectly on top. Yeah I kind of went with dragon because dragons are cool and uh, I've thrown cannon out the window so what I'm getting for the head is all that. So if you know your, know your dragons you know where that's from.
these are the completed parts of the dragon. Got the head, it's the tail, and the three parts of the body. Now Matt's just going to get some plaster dip. So these have already been heat sealed. And we're going to go outside and we are going to spray them with the plaster dip that you have found. Woo! And you brought more cans of ooh, paint yeah, and clear lacquer. Red. Yeah, so this is the red that's going to go on the dragon and other bits of the armor. And when I get the lid, it's all going to be this night fire red. It's uh, been recommended by a good, good fellow who uh, likes his meanings. So. Captain S. Yes, Captain S. That's going to be good. And also thank you to the YouTube commenters for pointing out using a scoring method in a heat gun will bring out some uh, lines. So that has been actually very useful for separate parts of here. So we're now just going to properly seal this paint it and we should hopefully get the paint job at least on the chest piece finished. Hi, I'm back. So we start in customization. We've already done a Schmando scale on the right. A Schmando. Schmando, 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 Schmando. Um, scale on the right shoulder belt, and we are now just customizing one of my knee plates to have a bounty count on there because I want to look cool. All right, pretty simple. What I do in a lot of videos, and uh, this is a lot of rinse and repeat. So the Mando skull was just done, but as you can see there's the bits that are cut out, so the bits that are cut out you don't need. And the rest of it you use spray adhesive. Go on, same thing I did, we get the oval on my Lucille bat, we make sure you tape everything off, lightly go over it spray paint so it doesn't seep under the paper, and then you get a really nice clean stencil. Which is what we're doing for this one, cut it out, there's a spray adhesive on, but we're kind of going to make these look a bit more worn like they've been painted on, so... I'm going to do a usual technique of liquid latex to make it look pretty cool, so hopefully that should work. when it comes to Boba Fett Hasbro stuff. Now the Clone Trooper helmet that I did, fairly easy to take apart, uh, fairly easy to modify. The Boba Fett helmet, nightmare to take apart and a lot harder to modify. The Boba Fett blaster, also a nightmare to take apart because all we want is this bit to uh, mask over. And what they've done is you can undo all the screws but the very tip, this uh, comb bit, is glued over the top and the mould lines from here down to about here are glued together. So you have to cut through with a Dremel, which unfortunately means that there's going to be some filling and sanding to do later to get rid of the line, to actually get there. But you can't open the whole thing because the mould lines for the scope are also glued together. So um, thankfully, with an extra pair of hands, I can just prise this out. So, um, 
Yeah, that just needs <laughs> wrapping. This is the only part that needs to be wrapped, and because that took way too long to get out. Effort. Hasbro, why do you make your Boba Fett stuff really awkward? <laughs> Some of us just want to take it apart. So, and moment of truth, just in case. Just in case. Well, I, I, I clipped it a little bit, but I think Three, that's just the case. Three, two, one. Hey, Yay. Yay. good. See, the LED's down here, it's fine. We're I good. didn't break anything with my drilling. <laughs> Thankfully the wires are just long enough that we can get this outside of the body so it won't get in the way of actually painting the body of the gun because we can't get the gun apart far enough to actually try and take the entirety of the wiring system out which is frustrating but there you go, yeah. it's the joy of making props <laughs> So just I would say put the battery casing back on because we don't want yeah. the spray to get on the um No, that would be good, but on the apart from course. that it is just just right. you say sand the logos off and then it can be yeah. primed. So here we have the gun all primed and ready to paint and this is gonna be the same colour scheme as the armour, so we're gonna go over with a base colour of black and do some detail work in red and once that's all done then we can put it back together and uh, it will need a little bit of filler on the nozzle so there are some stuff that's going to have to be hand painted but we have to keep it apart just to keep the light out. So the gun has now been painted black and you see I'm just starting taping it up to put on some details. Now Matt just wants some uh, red stripes on the front barrel here so that's just what I've taped off. And if there's anything else that I feel is going to look good he's going to trust me to make it look good so I decided I think the, uh, the cone on the barrel will look pretty good in red as well. I'm actually going to do some paint chipping effects and uh, hand paint a couple of red highlights um, on the uh, the main barrel of the gun and also maybe do uh, a little bit of red detail on the stock which is obviously separate from this but I might do that when I put the gun back together because obviously it's just painting the barrel that's a problem at the moment with where the LED is and when I do the back half of it I can put it back together and then put the stock back on and then remask it and repaint it so to get some paint chipping effect I'm going to use liquid latex and a little barbecue skewer just to sort of Put a little bit on so um, when you do put the red on and um, peel it off uh, it's just going to look like the paint's come away a little bit so it's not a completely clean gun so it gives like the idea that it's also been kind of custom painted as well like the, the paint slowly chipped off the original uh, base colour of the gun over time. is glued together and we got some filler in some of the seams now so it should be fairly seamless when painted nice and solid I'm gonna make it look like a cool metal holster that's quite boxy a bit like the clone troopers ones big enough to for the gun to go in and we're now we're working on another weapon which is gonna be the sword same way that I made my Templar knight sword I'm gonna use a bit of dowel for the strength in the middle build a handle around it make a blade out of foam so obviously this needs to be convention safe and was just cutting this dowel down to get the right length for it and had this bit as an off cut so we've just come up with the idea to use it as a dagger Look <laughs> ow! So I've just wrapped the end of this in some uh, thin about 2mm foam and uh, I've got this, which is a random pipe part that my dad brought home because he brings home lots of random looking things from work uh, as he's a builder. So if you ever like come across weird packaging or just random bits, always keep it because you never know when you're going to need it. So I'm actually going to use this for the main base of the handle and the reason I just wrap this is because it doesn't fit in here because it's actually too big. So I'm just going to put some glue down there, put some more glue on here, stick it on and it should work quite well. Is that a bit of knife? 
ready for this, so we'll go. That's quite slow on that. Probably because as, as a ace can't talk, uh, we are gonna sand down the big sword and then the dagger. This will be interesting because it never done it before. Not have with have you? Not with that. Not with the big scary. Uh, yeah, not with the scary sounding sander. So let's see how it goes. I'll do the little one first because I'm scared. Here we go. Our pile of lovely very nearly finished armor now we've actually gonna get it on the suit so it matches the uh, the mannequin for today <laughs> so we can perfectly size it up so this is gonna be a lot easier than doing it for the fet so uh, a lot of hand sewing actually getting all the velcro on because as I said for fet if you glue that stuff on and then you wash your suit glue is most likely going to come off so we got a few bits to velcro on and some bits which are going to be strapped on and other bits which are going to be magnetised on. So there's there's all sorts going on here. It's going to be fun. All methods. Crazy methods. <laughs> and then this a cheap old shirt and I'm going to put some holes in it to make it look battle scarred and whatnot. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, so we've been at this all day, and this is the only bit we've got uh, strapped up at the moment. Um, just 
just not proportionate. <laughs> just, everything just falls down. He's got no just... curves. He is just one straight line, so everything falls off. <laughs> so I'll show you through what we've done strapping wise at the moment. These are the knee plates. We we're originally just gonna velcro them on, but gone for an elastic strap that goes around the back. And there is a little bit of velcro right on the top of the knee just to stop them from slipping down. Uh, these are the thigh pieces, just small little bits there. Cause the suit's quite baggy, it's just it was a bit of a pain trying to get them to line up so they don't overlap too much on the knees or bunch up. But you know, just hand sewn on the velcro on the legs, which was quite amusing to do. And the other velcro is just glued on the inside. Uh, this is the tricky bit. This is the holster we've been struggling with. So it's actually got a couple of other straps that run through it. And originally, both of them were going to be like this strap that's uh, on the... I was trying to point, but I realised... <laughs> there we go. This strap here, which is actually underneath uh, the plate. So both of them were going to be there, but they just kept slipping down. These are actually riveted to yeah, the inside. There's one here, just one yeah. here now. Because again... There's nothing of me. No. Just, this is what it's like with the, the, the Death Trooper. Dad, I, I can probably feel your pain. It's just this, yeah, I just, everything just, poof, just, yep. just falls off. <laughs> yep. It does. So we've gone for uh, getting the second strap, which isn't quite right, because you can see the, the way it's riveted on, it's, it's not at a very good angle in the actual corner of the holster, but we won't be able to get it off without actually cutting the thing to pieces. So that's actually connected to a second strap via a buckle and that's going all the way over the top of the Death Trooper belt and down the other side. But actually it doesn't look too bad and that belt is just helping it stop slipping down so much. And you can see underneath the Death Trooper belt there's the little bit of the uh, the butt plate which you've also just had to sit and sew some velcro without poking him in the butt. I have no arse. He's got no arse so the uh, <laughs> the butt plate and uh, vice versa the cod piece that's attached to it just start slipping straight down. So we, need, <laughs> uh, we needed an attachment for that. But we think we've got it to a point where it's looking half decent. It's, it's a little bit it's a little bit awkward on the front, but I think if we're going to spend so much time tweaking it, it's going to cause a lot more problems. Yeah, yeah. So it might be something for the future. So the awkward bit's done. I'm glad we started with the legs. Uh, but mind you saying that, it's getting the chest done now, which is going to be the uh, second awkward part, making sure the chest pieces don't actually overlap and they sit all nice and cosy. But it should be a case of just being able to machine sew the pieces on, which is going to take a lot less time than hand sewing because you can't really get a machine up a trouser leg. So uh, fingers crossed, we're going to see how that goes. So there's been a lot of uh, messing around with this. This is uh, attempt number three on day number two of the strapping system. I thought it was going to be easy. Chest stuff on Mando is always tricky, but uh, this one especially so. Uh, you, the shirt you got was a bit too baggy, which meant the yeah. uh, the armour was uh, hanging down a lot. So this is actually one of my old shirts, which we're going to have to cut the sleeves off, but it's a long sleeve shirt. But it fits everything a lot better. You can see it's still kind of a little bit loose on certain parts, but that's, that's as good as we're going to get it for now. It fits and it's in the right place. We've got the back plate on as well, and it's just attached at the top. All this is done on Velcro. So again, there's a little bit of a gap around the back here. Try to even that out as much as possible, but it's quite hard once it's already painted, because on the inside you can see where the heat gun is uh, affecting the paint, but you do not want to do it on the outside of the lacquer because it's just going to bubble up immediately. And uh, thankfully, some of this is going to be covered with a sword and uh, some other random bits. So yeah, a lot of Velcro, a lot of repositioning. Now we're going to attempt to do a sword attachment with magnets, so it looks like there's just no attachments with it. Like you see in a lot of video games, you just go like, tink. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll give, we'll give that a bash. Yeah. But it looks grand, and I'm happy with it. As long as you're happy, that's the important bit. Alright, so there's a... A lot of fiddling with this suit, but this is pretty much 90% done. Obviously, we still got to paint the sword. The rain has finally stopped, so we're going to get round to that. The sword is attached via how many magnets have we got on here at the moment? Uh, yeah. We can probably see in the back now. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's ten magnets, five on the back, and five uh, in the sword. Which, yeah, we can get on and off. It works for if you're walking, but if you're running, uh, it will fall off. So it's just a case of it looks cool. 
when you're sort of walking around, but uh, yeah, it won't be entirely practical. No, I won't be sprinting, so, but yeah, love it. Sweet. So yes, you can see the magnets that are on the back, but we can always hand paint over those. So it's not too big a deal. These are the hand plates. They've just been Velcroed onto the back of the gloves. Easy peasy, those are your DT gloves. Yep, DT gloves, DT gauntlets with, this is probably gonna be on the day. It's, they're gonna be different each each time they'll be get put on, but hey, so it's kind of going down a little bit there. But hey, this is the idea I had. So on one image I saw, there's like loads and loads of bandages around the gauntlets. And yeah, got my Sabre trophy. On there, over here, you can see on there. Uh, still got a. Where's it gone? Still got to figure out where to put. This. Yeah. It's on the floor somewhere. That. The dagger we made. Yes, that was. With some weird little on it. Yeah, we're thinking. <laughs> I think you maybe leg. Down there, somewhere. Um, can you just make up a quick yeah. strap for it out of webbing, S that would work. Something like that, and then. Yeah, then obviously you've got the. Uh, uh, Complete blaster as well that we still need to resolder. Resolder, but hey, and that's, then, yeah, that's, uh, we can put that back together. Maybe add a strap as well for that, just a bit of webbing or something. But yeah, happy. Pretty much there. Good, Good as long as you're happy with oh, it. 100%. 100% So, yeah, there's a couple of details that need to be worked out. So we've got to cut the sleeves for that long sleeve shirt. Oh, yeah. Because then we've got, got to make sure everything is uh, fitted properly on that. Uh, maybe add some stuff to the knees. It depends if we've got time today, because literally this is the last day we've got free to work on this. Uh, obviously, you've got the helmet to do, and that's going to be uh, Captain S's job to finish that off. Yeah, we'll make sure we film so, that. So, yeah, it, it was a case of getting this thing like as done as we can today. Obviously, the, vel uh, the Velcro, the cape has just been Velcroed onto the back of uh, the, the back plate there. So, uh, it's pretty much the same as my Boba Fett one, so it just hangs off on the corner. It doesn't interfere with the sword too much, again, as long as you're aware that it's there, and then you can bring it forward and look all badass and... Hell yeah, we got the Outlanders logo on the the actual holster. Yeah. Which took forever to figure out how to get the bloody holster to sit right, but we've done it. <laughs> done it, and it. We've yeah. done it. So yeah. go on, you can get it out. Yeah, there you go. It's, yeah. yeah it's a particular particular way that it's got to go out. You got to put a kind of kind of kind of lift and kind of there you go like that. So but hey, it's brill. It's brill. It's all coming together. Yeah, so we just got a couple of final tweaks to do off camera because it's just a, l a lot of niggly bits that unfortunately it will happen to some people, it won't happen to others because it's it's the joy of cosplay. Things don't always work out. Things uh, haven't gone to plan. Things have not <laughs> gone to plan this weekend. I thought we'd get all the strapping and all the attachments done in one day. We literally got the legs done in one day and we've got the upper body done in another that's how ridiculous it is and we better make the most of the sunshine whilst it stays yeah. out and get that sword finished. Yeah, get it, get it done.
So this is now a couple of weeks after actually finishing uh, the main armour pieces of the build. As you see there's a little bit of wear and tear on certain parts. It's done a couple of events. Figured out some bits that weren't working too well. So just sort of fix it up a little bit. And uh, now Matt actually has his proper Mando bucket. Very, very happy with it. Yeah, I cannot thank Jai. I know I always forget you buddy. He's the guy, uh, the lovely little chap who uh, printed this for me. Um, and then big thank you to Captain Zone, lovely buddy. Yeah, he did the Nightfire Red. His paint job, again, he's said I could use it so he can't have this colour scheme anymore. That's not my <laughs> fault. That's not my fault. But yeah, there's, it's going to go back in the workshop, but uh, I'm just, yeah, just blown away at how just amazing it is. I'll get and grab a new riser as well, um, material, because yeah, I did this and I'm not very good at stuff. So, <laughs> so this yeah. is this is a team effort. A team. team, yay team. So four so. Outlanders all together to create a, yeah. a full Mando kit. Yeah. And the so. strap here wasn't working, so I put magnets uh, on the side of this blaster. Uh, so, but apart from that, yeah, this is this is it. And all I can say is, thank you, boss lady. Thank you, Jai. Thank you, Captain Zone. Because uh, I have great friends. So. <laughs> I did not pay him to say that. <laughs> but no. But yeah. But all I'm going to say is, you watching. Yeah, you. You sat at your computer right now. Go look at this wonderful person's Patreon because it's just unfair what YouTube's doing. Algorithm is absolutely f and it's ruining small channels like Boss Ladies. So go, go and check out our Patreon and because there's awesome stuff. As a Star Wars fan, there's um, absolutely amazing stuff that's coming. So go check it out. Literally just a dollar, whatever. Just support, support, because YouTube is absolutely f Thank you. Totally won't have to bleep some of that out. <laughs> So, but hey, no. it's all good. It's all good. So, uh, there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I know some people have been asking for a, a proper custom Mando build. So, there you go. It's actually it was quite fun. It's interesting to work with different materials and do something quite new. I, yeah. I guess so. You might rebuild something as well. Uh, yeah. Because you've seen this. Uh, so he needs an upgrade. He needs. Not, he's only been to one event and he already needs an upgrade. But there's a thing in the box that needs to be made first. There's there's lots of delicious Star Warsness coming out on this channel, so stay tuned. Hey, I think I'm gonna steal your line, you know. So so yeah. Links all in the description. The Patreon link right here. You're gonna do this. There's a Patreon link here. So go click it, go check it out, and again pledge. Do it, do it, you won't regret it. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. All the links are in the description and may the force be with you.